So there are a wide range of general applications of artificial intelligence. AI is having an impact upon pretty much every field and area of industry within our society. But there's a few key ones we should be aware of. Um, agriculture. Farmers have been using new technology since the start of farming. Any improvement to productivity has an immediate benefit in their processes. So they tend to be quite innovative with the use of new technologies. And artificial intelligence and particularly robotics is certainly uh, being applied in the agricultural industry at a whole range of levels from um, planning where to plant and how to plant using drones and satellite imagery and all the rest to analyze um, what should be planted through to automatic planting systems, um, automated weeding systems that can identify weeds through the use of artificial intelligence and imagery, um, through the watering systems and um, fertilization systems, uh, fertilizer systems to minimize waste and to maximize crop yields. And then there's the harvesting processes and then transport and distribution processes and mechanisms to keep um, animals uh, healthy and productive, with automated milking machines and all of the other aspects of the farming industry, let alone just simple business applications around artificial intelligence to work out the best markets and the best ways of uh, maximizing profits and so forth. So. The agricultural industry has certainly been a, a large benefit from um, any new technology, but artificial intelligence has certainly been one of those. Now, the aviation industry has probably been using AI earlier than almost any other industry. Um, the whole idea of the autopilot was a very early innovation in aviation, and that has only continued to improve and advance and incorporate new technologies as it has done so. But there's also a whole range of other processes around optimal route planning and uh, maximizing fuel efficiency and even down to just tracking where luggage is and um, identifying the best processes for luggage handling. And then, of course, there's a whole um, new application process for booking flights um, through websites and identifying um, the needs of customers on various service routes and all of those other elements that go into the aviation industry. Um, governments have also been utilizing AI systems to improve their efficiencies, um, identifying where services are needed, um, using systems to improve safety and um, things such as detecting whether or not pools are fenced or not through satellite imagery. Um, and a whole range of other processes whereby government services and, um, and also customer relationship processes uh, in order to be able to interact with um, government using chatbots to try to minimize waiting times and other processes to speed up the red tape that has notoriously been plaguing systems such as driver's license renewals and all of those other elements that are necessary for governmental functions, but can be quite onerous from a consumer point of view. Then there's the whole finance industry, particularly um, back-end processes around um, stock, uh, stock levels and distribution systems and all of the rest. And as we've moved to online shopping and um, so forth, that has only increased that um, element of uh, stock management, but also in the high finance areas of market um, identification, tracking markets, working out where to invest, um, and AI systems are now very much integrated into that whole stock market process. Uh, for, for good and bad, sometimes when things go awry, as they do with stock markets, AI systems can um, react in ways that uh, may amplify some of the um, problems and we can see runaway markets, but that also happened with human beings as well. It just tends to happen a little bit more quickly uh, when you have AI systems making those decisions. But there's also aspects down even to personal finance, being able to track your own finances, optimize 
um, your own savings and what you spend money on and how and AI giving prompts and suggestions as to how to uh, minimize waste in your own personal um, circumstances. Then we have heavy industry. Again, one of the earlier introductions of AI systems with industrial robots and particularly robot arms used in the manufacturing process, say for automobiles. But that's now extended into a whole range of other processes, mostly because it can be done 24 seven. Um, whereas human beings have got certain limitations, we can only work so much. Robots have much fewer limitations in that respect. Now, they still have some limitations, but AI systems being able to identify faults and rectify those and to improve the quality of products being produced have certainly been a major element and have taken away a lot of the dangerous aspects of those um, jobs. Then there's also just uh, the more mundane elements and efficiencies around those, such as uh, the Amazon warehouses where they use robots to move and collect all the goods people are purchasing online and can travel through vast warehouses and find the exact item that's needed, take it back to the mail distribution center and send it off to um, arrive at someone's home in record time. Uh, and that wouldn't be possible without such efficiency gains. Then we have the area of healthcare. Now, this is probably where the greatest gains have been occurring in recent years around um, detection of diseases and also generation of new uh, antibiotics and treatments through the use of AI systems, being able to analyze lots of data and come up with new therapies, new drugs and new processes, where in the past that took a long time for researchers to explore and identify uh, particular options. Now, tens of thousands of options can be explored at once and simulation models can be done to improve those efficiency processes as well. Then you've got a whole range of medical imaging, detecting cancers and detecting anomalies in um, medical data at a greater rate than was possible with human beings doing that role. And then there's aspects of telehealth, where we're being able to have remote consultations with um, doctors, but increasingly now also interacting with AI chatbots in initial, um, initial interactions. Now they may not be able to go all the way to provide full medical diagnostic support, but they can certainly help identify some major, some minor issues and provide a lot of that initial consultation that a doctor can then come along and use their um, specific expertise on top of the processes that the AI is using. Uh, recruiting and human resources has been a big area and also a very controversial area. Um, the idea of computers being able to sift through the tens of thousands of applicants and identifying the best applicant for a position, but also in the unfortunate instances where people need to be let go from companies, AI systems again sifting through all the data available and identifying who is best to be let go from a business perspective. Now, of course, that raises um, ethical issues around the impact those decisions have upon human beings. Um, and it's an area that's still in flux. But those issues still existed with human beings making those decisions. It's just because they're very emotive issues, having a computerized system make those decisions can make that more painful for those involved. Marketing has been another big area and advertising where a lot of it has relied upon masses amounts of data and identifying what are the key things that will make people buy certain products and analyzing that and creating advertisements and marketing strategies to maximize the sales and profits and so forth. Um, but also looking just at forecasts and tracking trends and being able to identify, say in fashion, what the trend might be in two years time. Whereas in the past it needed uh, very specialized human intelligence to be able to make those predictions and get ahead of the trends. Now AI systems may allow more companies to be able to um, do so and meet market needs um, in that way. Now the media has also been a big uptake of AI. Um, 
again, mostly focused around marketing and uh, consumer demand and expectations. But the idea of being able to now generate movies and television series based upon market data um, and a number of TV shows and movies have now been created by analysing um, a big example has been the Netflix platform. Of course, they've had millions and millions of people um, using that uh, service and they've been able to track their viewing habits and identify what sort of characters they like, uh, what sort of movie themes and plots they like and analysing all of that data to then write the scripts that will maximise uh, viewer engagement with the stories that are going to be told. Now, of course, movie makers have always done this, but having a machine do this process in such a cold and calculating manner does irk many people, particularly the writers of movies and TV shows. Um, of course, it does take a lot of their creative input out of the process. But it should be making more movies and TV shows that have a, a greater interest for more people. Now, from an artistic perspective, that is problematic because it does tend to homogenize and create a whole series of movies that are very similar or TV shows that are very similar. Um, the current uh, comic book movie genre has been coming to a lot of criticism around that. Most of the movies are pretty much the same in terms of plot and indeed characters just the sort of the settings and uh, are tweaked a little bit. But that has a long tradition in comic books where those processes have been um, established and refined over thousands and thousands of um, comic book stories. So yes, it's happened in, with humans driving these processes, but now with AI systems driving the processes, it raises some other additional concerns. Now, of course, the military has been using AI systems for a long time, uh, particularly in what's called battle management, with the huge amount of information that can flow into um, command posts around all the things that are happening in a military situation. Being able to make decisions that minimize uh, loss and maximize the objectives that are needed to be achieved by the military, um, AI systems are proving very effective in that process. Now, the concern is that some of those processes are becoming so efficient and effective that human beings are being taken out of those processes. Now, one of the earlier um, examples of this was around the um, nuclear ICBMs, uh, the nuclear missiles, where because they wanted to ensure that as many missiles were launched as possible before they were destroyed on the ground, um, the time frame around making the decision to launch and having the missiles launched was very short. So having automated systems for that process was seen as a benefit because it would mean it would be less likely that someone would attack them um, because more, uh, it would be more likely that a retaliatory strike would be successful. Now, of course, that's all well and good in theory, but by taking human beings out of the, the loop, um, it does open up the potential for mistakes to happen and for unintended launches and nuclear wars to occur which of course would be a bad thing. So there are trade-offs in those processes. And the current issue we now face is with autonomous drones, where at the moment drones are generally flown by a pilot, um, even though they may be sitting in a desert in the middle of a country, many tens of thousands of miles or kilometers away from um, where the drone actually is, there is still generally a human being making the key decisions. More and more now, the drones are flying autonomously. Um, they're still not actually attacking autonomously, but they spend their time flying autonomously and a pilot is only assigned to the drone when it is needed to for an attack to occur. Now, with the systems improving, it's getting now to the point whereby the drone may be able to operate completely autonomously, detect a target, identify the target, verify that it's the correct target, and launch an attack. Now, of course, that then raises a whole range of other potential ethical issues around the use of um, AI for taking of human life. Um, back to some more less impactful 
uh, things in terms of um, human life, but possibly more impactful upon our culture is the music industry. Now, um, the generation of music by machines has been around for quite a while, but now having autonomous generation and the creative processes has been relatively new. And what's concerning a lot of musicians is that the nature of music is such that almost any new musical creation involves some reference to past musical creations. Coming up with an entirely new type of music, an entirely new song or genre of music is very difficult. There's only so many permutations. So when human beings do that, it's generally seen as part of the creative process. Um, you might have been a great advert, um, really enjoyed listening to the music of Beethoven and um, Pink Floyd. And you've used those influences to come up with new ideas for music and your own creations and performances. But when AI does that, it's seen as sampling other people's intellectual property. So there's a current debate occurring as to whether or not that is actually an infringement on intellectual property or whether or not the AI systems are simply mirroring what artists have always done, um, had influences by other artists. So that's an area that's under um, discussion at the moment between artists and AI developers as to whether or not um, intellectual property will be applied to the generative aspects of AI art and music and films and whatever else they end up generating. So I've given you a little activity, a um, little interactive that you can explore around using your own body movements um, with your webcam detecting your hand movements to conduct your own orchestra. And the orchestra will play music based upon the tempo of your hand movements and raising the volume and lowering the volume and uh, gesturing towards different musical instruments to uh, play stronger or weaker as a conductor would do in generating their own musical performance. Okay, so other industries. Um, the news and publishing and writing industries are of course uh, facing major changes now with generative text and a lot of um, material that you will read in newspapers and in blog posts and so forth are now being generated by AI systems rather than by human beings, simply because their business models rely upon the generation of lots of um, short summaries and items of text, and AI systems can do that so effectively and efficiently. Now, we don't quite see a lot of AI novels just yet, but there's certainly many artists and writers that will be using AI systems to assist them in the writing of novels, and it won't be too long before AI systems will be able to generate entire novels and novel series and so forth. Likewise, that will extend into the movie industry and, of course, the mu music industry and other forms of entertainment as well. And indeed, the current area of interest is around generation of computer games. Of course, computer games are actually more expensive and more complex to create than movies. But AI systems now can take a lot of that um, mundane work around the generation of scenery and char uh, characters and all the rest and automate those processes. And then finally, we've got um, for children, a lot of their toys and games are being enabled with AI systems where the child can talk to their toy and the toy can talk back and they can interact with the toy. And increasingly, the toy can interact in very complex ways uh, with cameras in the toy that can recognize the child recognize whether or not the child is feeling happy or sad based upon their facial features and a whole range of other interactions and building in chatbots so that the child can interact with the toy and the toy will transform into being much more of a friend than an inanimate object. And from an educational perspective, eventually into a tutor that will work with that child to assist them in their learning processes. So considering all of those industrial applications of artificial intelligence, can you think of any other areas where AI is changing the way an industry works and share those into teams? And we'll discuss them in the tutorial.